Hello folks, this is Kiki. Doing Let's Play Army Man World at War Final Assault, otherwise known as Lock and Load. This is the third set in the series, and the first thing we're going to do is look, look at the gameplay changes by going into the boot camps. Uh, pretty much, it, things change between game to game, so we kind of have to get up to date on what's going on here. First things first is the boot camp. Now look behind this. Now this looks a lot like the uh, Air, Land, and Sea boot camp, but you can also tell that they were lazy. They put all the signs saying rifle range on it. Uh, so I think they just went lazy on it. Anyway, that's the next gameplay change. If you pick up a semi-auto, it'll automatically switch to semi uh, your semi-auto. Meaning that... Uh, if you want it, if you wanted to conserve your ammo, you can't. Uh, this is a good and a bad thing, I suppose. But it is kind of an annoyance that I didn't really like. Uh, unfortunately, due to me picking up the gun real quick, I can't do thing. Can't show you the other gameplay change. And also, you'll notice that texture walls are a little bit more refined this time, as in you actually have a little bit chance of using cover effectively without having them block your shots. So what they did was they fine-tuned their texture packs a bit more to, to give a little bit smoother gameplay. Uh, pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm just playing around and figuring out what the controls are uh basically to to do a when you hit the hit the dirt dive you have to press and hold the button in order to keep uh like that keeping the crouch i mean in the prone position kind of an annoyance but what can you do there that was kind of a common problem in the army man games is did it is either you have to hold it or they make it to where it's stuck and you have to press a different button entirely and back up and then get going. So I think they were just trying to mess with the mechanic. Anyway, loading screens are taking too long, so from here on out, I'm just going to be loading my previous save state. Uh, let's move on to the grenade range. As you can see here, each range is at, has its own loading level rather than doing it all at once kind of an annoyance uh, but what can we do right now it's the grenade range let's see how they change the grenade throws people know who've been watching my uh, LP so far know that grenades is not something I'm good at so let's see what their next rendition of throwing a hand grenade is Pretty simple here. Uh, as I said before, uh, pretty much no change there, but you notice that the sign says rifle range, rifle range. So it's like they just loaded the uh, the previous edition of the boot camp and then just made each one an individual level and then locked it off. Not sure why they did it, but they did it. So. Uh, what we do now is we uh, throw hand grenades at the targets. Uh, as you notice, there's a bit of a higher arc, even higher than the land, sea, and air version, uh, giving the player a chance to actually throw a grenade rather than hit a wall. Also, you notice that from doing it from the prone position, it actually throws really high, giving you a, a lot easier chance of hitting your target with uh, lots of actually pretty decent accuracy so far. Uh, they looks like they spent some time refining that a lot, uh, meaning hand grenades are actually somewhat useful now, and they don't actually try to accidentally kill yourself with them. They aren't perfect, though, as I said, because the momentum they give th makes you think that they give more of a bounce than what they do, so it's a little deceiving there. But still, the higher arc and a little bit faster speed does make up the difference. Uh, 
I think what they did was they just took the palette level of the rifle range and then they just slapped it in there for all the other levels. Just kind of being lazy that way, I suppose. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about here with the little bit of the seat and throwing it here. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to compensate the bounce and make the bounce hit the tank because of my range. But it's not doing that. So I have to actually step up a bit and then throw the grenade. Uh, so you might see me using hand grenades more during this LP than you have in the previous World, World at War series. And unfortunately I just accidentally hit the tank. So let's go ahead and reload. Now we'll go to the bazooka range. See what's changed here. If anything has changed. Pretty much the same as before, just fine aiming, yada yada yada. Nothing too elaborate or special. Let's see how the grenades fire. I mean, the bazookas fire. Uh, generally, for all the other series, you can kind of spam it. And we'll go ahead and take a look back here. See, sign says rifle range, other sign says rifle range. Lazy coding. Kind of irked. <laughs> but anyway. Go ahead and take a shot here. Also, you notice that our crosshair has changed. It's even more defined than what it was. They made it a little bit smaller. Uh, they put a middle section there for you. Uh, they, they definitely tried to make it a little more user-friendly uh, compared to the older renditions of the crosshair. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see if we can fire from the ground. Some renditions of Iron Man you can aim from the ground. Some of them you can only do it from the kneel or the t standing position. Looks like you can do it from the, from the prone position. That's kind of a good thing to know. So we'll go ahead and smash that one up. And then we'll f go on to the next range. See what's changed there. Now, flamethrowers historically isn't widely used in the Army Man series, uh, just due to it being overpowered. So, I wonder what they've done to change this. But first, we'll do the mortar range before we do the flamethrowers. Because I just felt like doing mortars first, but talking about flamethrowers. <laughs> so, meh. Anyway, people who's also been watching my LPs know that I've had trouble with one certain enemy type called the Mortarman. Uh, the Tan Mortarman pretty much can dead nut nail you anywhere you are and don't even have to see you. As long as a friendly sees you, a friendly Tan sees you, it pretty much can nail you on the head. Heck, you could not even be spotted and the thing will nail you on the head. So let's see how quickly he can aim, he can fire. Now remember, what works for you also works for the tan. So we have to keep this in mind when we're firing this, about how fast the tan soldier could fire on us. It uh, looks like the aiming reticule is rather, rather quick. They accelerated it by a good couple seconds compared to its other kind of parts so far. And also looks like we can already aim, reload, and fire before... Uh, there's no there's no delay and there's no pause like in the other ones. I mean that tan mortarman could just literally rape us. I doubt they programmed the AI to fire this quick, but still, just the idea of it firing that quick is kind of scary. Also, I was just playing around with the uh, rifle. So now we'll move on to the flamethrower. Like I said before, the flamethrower is historically the most overpop weapon in the uh, Army Man series. Just because normally all you have to do is just tap the button a couple times and it'll instantly kill. 
In fact, in some games, it's actually preferred that you tap it, while other games, it's preferred that you hold it on. Lancy and Error require that you actually hold it for it to do damage. Uh, World at War and Sarge's Heroes line, all you have to do is just tap it, and the initial burst does more damage. So let's see what's going on here. And I'm just playing around with the gun a little more. Okay. Uh, still 100. And looks like it's a small area compared to the other flamethrowers, which actually had a little bit of a lengthy area to it. And it looks like that actually has an extremely small area of effect. And it looks like if you hold it, it extends a little bit more, but it's still not worth it. So it looks like they're attempting to nerf the range. And also the uh, fuel for it goes down rather quick. So basically they just made the fuel consumption extremely fast. And uh, now we'll go back to the rifle range. This time I wanted to show off the change to the regular rifle. Now remember what I said before, if you picked up uh, one of them automatic or semi-auto uh, rifle things, it automatically gives you the 100 and you can't switch back to your normal gun. Uh, looks like it fires very, very slowly. As you can see, I'm trying to tap fire and it's not working. Yes, this time uh, they made it completely single action. Uh, giving no semi-auto effect and no uh, fully auto effect like the uh, other ones where you could just kind of spam the button. This time you actually have to hold hold on for it a couple of seconds before you can fire. Also, you have to hold the, the dive button and you have to uh, shoot it in order to aim it. And it aims a little low. Anyway, this will be Kiki signing out for part one. Thank you.